it was recently pointed out to me that I've been slacking on uh, doing model railroad projects recently. And as I scroll back, yeah, I have. It's been a couple of months. Time to rectify that. I'm going to do one of these tank car kits today. These are, as you can see, 8,000 gallon riveted uh, style uh, tank cars from Proto 2000. These things have been out of production for quite some time. They were on sale when I got them a couple of decades ago for 10 bucks a piece. Actually, I probably got the four of them for a little bit better price than that too. These ones are SHPX, which at the time was called Shippers Carline Corporation. The SHPX uh, numbers or uh, lettering still exists, but the, the name has changed in recent decades. So let's crack one of these out of the bulk pack and figure out which one. I guess it doesn't really matter which one we're going to do. Let's just do this one. So these kits, actually Proto 2000 freight cars in general, were sort of made in the 90s to early 2000s. Um, this was from the Lifelike company, which sold the uh, their business, their uh, model railroading business to Walther's in was it 2005, I think. So these aren't available anymore, and Walther's seems to have not carried on this particular uh, car model, or at least looking at their web pages, they're all out of stock and out of production. So where's the... There we go. There's everything out of the box. So we've got some weights. We've got the car body itself. That's a fairly sharp pad printing. Can we get in close enough to read that? Yeah. So built date of, uh, is that November, 1928, which means that this car in the 1970s, when my railroad is supposedly set is going to be actually beyond the end of its life. In reality, I'm going to pretend that there's still a few of them running around the world, but cause I've actually got a few of these riveted tank cars, just because I like the look of them. And it's my railroad, I get to make the rules. These Proto 2000 cars, they were lifelike previous to the Proto 2000 line showing up in the mid 90s. Lifelike was known for making cheap train set kind of stuff. They really brought their game up when they put out the Proto 2000 series. The details are just really impressive on them. Uh, they go together well. They run like proper models, not like toys. First introduced in 1921, the Type 21 cars remained in use through the 1950s and 60s. Beginning in the 1930s, the brake systems were updated to the new, safer AB brake standard, which is what these are. Let's see what else is in the kit. I know I'm bouncing around here. I haven't done one of these for a while, and I'm just, I'm just actually kind of having fun with it. So... There's the car body weights. The reason you want to add weight is to make these track better, make a car track better. These are fairly lightweight car. Some grab irons and some ladders and looks like a little hatch here. This is the, a lot of the brake rigging. Nice. That is the grab iron that runs around the outside of there, the grab rail, I should say, as a single molding. Wow. And the bottom of the car. Ah, that's what that piece was. That's the hatch that goes in the bottom, a clean out hatch. And then the, the center beam and under frame of the car. There's even those coupler centering springs. And they've printed the car number on the under frame. Is that that is the brake pipe and more underframe detail and even more grabs the brake wheel, coupler pocket covers, stirrup steps. There is the dome with printing on it. Craziness. The brake tank also with printing on it. 
that'll be the pressure information. That's just nuts. The level of detail that they put on there. Wow. That's some excellent pad printing. I'm assuming that's pad printing, maybe screen printing. And then we've got the wheels and truck and the couplers. For tools, I'll be using a fresh X-Acto blade. And we'll be using a razor blade, probably. I'll be using a pair of flush cutters that actually meet flush at the end, as opposed to these cheap ones here that aren't meeting flush for cutting stuff off the sprues. I may also be using this set of uh, nail clippers to cut stuff off the sprues to get in close. And I'll be using a variety of tweezers. Probably at minimum that set and one of these reverse acting sets just to grab onto stuff. And the glue du jour is Tester's Plastic Cement. So the first thing the instructions say is to glue the dome caps to the dome and basically put everything on top of the dome. Just picking the part numbers off the sprue and going for it. So there's the pieces that go on the dome, some dome caps, some curved grabs to go on top of there. Cover number 27 off here. So it's usually better to make multiple light passes than one really heavy pass to get these off. Partly so you don't stick yourself in the finger with your knife, but partly so you don't distort the part. And it looks like there's some flashing on the back of that, but I don't think it matters. Now then there's a grab iron that goes onto that. And because these things are so tiny, they give you two. Since those holes go right through, I could actually put a drop of glue on from the back. And that should wick into the hole. And the other thing that does is puts a bit of glue on there. So that hopefully I can drop it in. Uh oh. Now then, one thing to watch out for is the, sh the hinge. Or the latch. I think I'll just put that on there. That's sitting like that. I'll just flip it over. Put a little touch of glue on from the back side. And let that set up for a second. So I'm going to use a slightly different method to break these guys loose. Just saw on that side to get them loosened up. And on this side, just using the razor blade. So it's turning out that these holes are a little bit tight, so I'm just going to open them up with a tiny little drill bit in my pin vise. As long as they don't get too carried away, I shouldn't have any problem. Uh, the, the the glue, the solvent, will. Uh, Fill in some of the gaps anyway. But hopefully that should be enough to make them fit better. Okay, so there's one and again. 
I just hit it with a little bit of the solvent glue from the inside and it wicked up into the hole. So these aren't what I would call a shake the box beginner kit. I've done a couple of those in the past. Uh, a flat car I think was one of them. And those, but this is a pretty good sort of next step up kind of kit. If you can find them. And I did a little bit of looking around and these ones are still available on eBay if you look around. As is so many things. So the next step is attach the weights and secure them into the, into the uh, top and bottom half um, and put some more grab irons on and what's 32 uh, running boards I guess so yeah, and then set it aside again these are really good instructions very complete it even gives you instructions on uh, on cutting stuff apart screw through them and into the piece. Don't have to over tighten them, just enough so that they won't rattle around. You don't want to strip the screw out. Now that adds some significant weight and that'll help it track nice and straight once it's on the rails. So these notches here, see there and there, line up with those ribs inside. If you've got it the other way, it won't quite line up. And then it tells me to apply some glue to the inside and then snap it in place. So now that I've dry fitted it, I shall do just that. that would be unsightly if I do get any on the outside don't get your fingers in it because the the solvent will evaporate clean but if you leave a fingerprint in it in the softened plastic you're hosed okay so same as with the grab irons on the dome I've used this drill to open up all the holes uh, just ever so slightly and now I'll just put these guys on. Now these ones I can't get at from the inside so I'm going to have to just gently put just a little touch of cement on there. That's way more than I should have put on. But it evaporates fairly cleanly. I'll just proceed to put the rest of these bits on. So with these tiny grabs, it's inevitable that you're going to break one. Fortunately, they give you two extras. Unfortunately, I'm clumsy. So this is one of the broken ones that's the least broken. So I'll tack one end on there and then I'll take one of the broken pieces. There's one of the broken pieces. And I'll put it in the other hole and hopefully I can join it up. Perfect, but I think it'll do. So the next sub of assembly phase three is to put some of the brake gear, the triple valve, uh, that guy there, the underframe. Uh, no, not that one. That's not the underframe. There's the underframe. 
So the triple valve goes on the train line, which is what I called the brake pipe earlier. Um, some more grab irons of different, two different kinds. And the outlet valve of the brake system, that guy there. And there's a saddle. Where is the saddle? 25. Okay. Okay, that part that I called the uh, the bottom hatch cover is actually what they're calling the saddle. Which I guess is just where the tank sits down onto the, uh, onto the underframe. As I'm going, I'm just cleaning off little bits of flash and little bits of sprue off the ends of the pieces as I'm cutting them out. What do we need here? Zero 09, the brake valve, the triple valve. Yeah, I'm, what I'm finding is working best on this kit. It's just using a gentle sawing motion with the with the razor blade. It's not as critical for the larger parts, but on the smaller parts like the grab iron, it's proved to be very important. Okay, this is going to be a real bugger to get off. Number 14, the train line. This is the air pipe that basically runs the entire length of the train at one end the air comes in from the direction of the locomotive and at the other end it goes out to the next car and along the way it connects up just to the brake uh, brake plumbing within the car and I'm cutting this a little bit roughly here not not rough as in heavy-handed because I know that's going to end in tears but rough as in a little bit wide you can see that there's some little bits left on and I'll scrape those off once I've got this freed up from its uh, sprues it is relatively flexible but it's also quite fragile I think I think I already mentioned that while this isn't a beginner kit, it's definitely doable for somebody who's doesn't have a lot of experience with making kits, especially when you find a good deal on one on eBay. But these really up the level of quality on your railroad. If you can, uh, muster the patience to build them and again they're not going to be the quality of a craftsman kit or a, an expensive brass kit but wow do i need to go to this level not really but I'm just wanting to challenge myself to see just how decent a job that I can do. I'm often of the uh, three foot rule opinion that if you can't see something from three feet away, then it doesn't matter. But sometimes you like to challenge yourself. And the challenge with doing this is getting it cleaned up without destroying it there is the outlet valve number 34 it's a relatively robust piece and the retainer valve number 33 holy crap that's a tiny guy There's the brake retainer valve. Will it focus on this? That will go into one of these holes in the back of the brake valve here.
looks pretty much like it. Now I'll just glue it down. Which I think I'm going to wait for the triple valve to get a little bit more firm in place. So I'm going to poke that into one of the holes in the back of it. So this train line's being tricky. I had to trim the ends a little bit. And then I've got that one tacked down there, that little bracket, and I got it tacked down there. I'm going to tack down in the back of the triple valve. I'm just going to wait for those to dry before I tack this little saddle down and here and at the end. Okay, I've got all the all the different spots of that glued down and just let it dry for a little while here. That's one thing about a kit with this level of detail on it. You spend an awful lot of time waiting for glue to dry until you move on to the next step. Which is fine. I mean, time spent doing a hobby is time well spent, in my opinion. Next is adding these grab irons on the ends. And there's a set that goes on the sides as well. And just for the fun of it, I'm trying these little micro brushes with the glue. Just to see if that, they're still pretty big. for getting into tiny little details like that. But we'll see how it goes. Might actually have to come up with something even finer, maybe a paintbrush or something. The trick with getting these ones into place is that they're in the middle of a channel. And it's really hard to get the tweezers in there. But I think I've got that one in. And you notice that I've uh, moved my helping hands to hold on to it, so I've got both hands to mess with it. There. Last one in place. Okay, so the next step is the coupler cut levers, these two. Those are the levers that the uh, train crew, when they're disconnecting the cars, flips to open the coupler. There's two different ones. This one with the bend in it goes on the B end of the car, which is the end with the brake wheel. Um, and the bend is to go around that little uh, cutout for the brake wheel, which is that right there. Halfway there. There you go, that goes right in there, perfect. That one went in fairly nicely. Now let's see if it'll stay there. Yes, I think it will. And the last thing to go in is this piece, which they call saddle. And I've already attached this other chunk on while I was waiting for outlet valve. Uh, okay. Already attached that on while I was waiting for other stuff to dry. So that just kind of sets in there into that little groove. And I think, yeah, I can get at it from underneath to glue it. So I can swap lots on and not have to worry about if I've made a mess or not. Make it nice and secure. So that is, oh no wait, I've got the retainer valve. Where is it? There it is back there. Okay, one last thing to go on. It needs to go right in this little hole there. There is phase three details on the top of the underframe completed. So now we flip him over and do the details on the bottom side. There's quite a bunch of pieces that we're gonna need here. Okay, well, what do we need here? Air reservoir, check. 
underframe. Underframe, that's that part. Insert the installed couplers. So I'll need the coupler pocket lids, which are there. And the couplers, which are over here. Screw them on. Do not over tighten. Screw the brake cleaver. That's this whole assembly on here, which has the all these levers that connect to the uh, the actual brakes, and that is the cylinder that pulls them. That goes into the valve, and the placard boards, and some stirrup steps. Oh, at least those aren't quite as tiny as the grab irons. Okay, back to cutting. So the air tank goes into that little hole just above the triple valve. Kind of like that. With the lettering facing out, of course. And then which way does that go? Sometimes you got to be a little bit ambidextrous to clamp this stuff down until the glue firms up. Okay, now that that piece is on there, I can get busy with the brake lever detail. And I've already got the uh, the brake piping, the air pipe uh, connected to the tail end of the brake cylinder. So that drops in like that, and then all those bits just go into their little holes. It's going to take a little bit of finagling, and then glue that down. So the next bit is to put the placards on, and they go on from the bottom. When they're properly oriented, they look like that, but they go on this way into these little notches down here. Now, how the hell am I supposed to hold that in there while the glue dries? Oh, let's just put a drop of glue in there. Let it soften for a second. Grab that placard by the very, very tip. And just hold it for a second. Okay. I think that looks fairly straight. Let's pull that out and take a look here. Yeah, that'll work. And let dry. And because I wasn't paying attention, I skipped another step. So now I'll have to come back and do it. I was supposed to put on the trucks or on the uh, couplers before I put the placards on. So I'll just gently balance that up on top of there. And we'll put these couplers on. It also comes with these horn hooks, but yuck. Don't use those if you can avoid it. The KD compatible knuckle cup holders are so much nicer. So that spring just sets down into there. The knuckle sets down into there. The coupler box lid sets down onto there. And the screw goes in. But as it says in the instructions, do not over tighten. What you want is the cover retained and this able to flex back and forth on its spring. 
Next step, stirrup steps. Steppity step, step, step. Which are these guys. And they go on there. And there's the fourth stirrup step. How come that one's kind of wonky? And there's the four stirrup steps in there. And wet dry. Phase five, main assembly. Glue the cradles to the cradle straps. There's a little notch on the back of them to make them fit together. Then it gets intense. To dry fit the tank onto the underframe and make sure that everything lines up and then put it all together then put the trucks on okay okay so these pieces just slot together sort of just like that and i'll let those dry and uh yeah Okay, now it says dry fit the tank to the underframe, which is pretty straightforward. Proper alignment. Yeah, everything seems to sit good down there. And these guys sit into these slots down here. And the tank sits on top of them. And then there's a little pin in these that goes into the side of the tank. Ah, crap. I didn't wait long enough. Okay. Okay, I've got those four pieces. What are those called? Uh, cradle assemblies in there. And they have dried. Now I'll lower this down into place. Nothing's glued in place yet. And those two cradles just fell out. What I'm doing is pinning these into there. Okay, so those two straps are pinned in place on this side. Touch that with a bit of glue there, and a bit of glue there. And you won't be able to see this, I don't think. I'll just get the bottom of these two saddles down here. And that should hold that all in place. I'm going to let this side just firm up a little bit before I put them back on. I'll spin it around and I'll see if I can sneak them in there. I should be able to, hopefully. And this isn't exactly how it described that it should go together. But that's okay. Next step is to screw the trucks on. Okay. And I guess that will crank that down. So that's, uh, that's good. And as before, it said, do not over tighten the screws. I guess just enough to hold the, uh, hold the trucks in place. You want a little bit of wobble in them to deal with uneven track surfaces but you don't want so much that it falls over and you want them to be able to spin easily like that there we go now those saddles are all in place yeah that's good it can sit on its own wheels now don't need the box anymore all right we're up to final assembly First, glue the inner straps, these, to there, there, and there, and there, which is 
there and there and the same on the other side basically completing these straps that are molded on and tying it down to the frame uh, then glue the letters to the tank in the underframe glue the brake wheel shaft and the brake wheel put the dome on tank hand wheel tank handrail okay and the brake wheel assembly so these seem to go there Yeah, that's exactly what they do. They go from there down to there, except for... Looks like I'm going to have to open those holes up. One down, three more to go. And now the ladders. This one's going to be a little bit tricky because it's a little bit bent. It was bent like that in the package. But I think it plugs into holes in the run on the gangway there yeah or the side frame I guess that really is so I'll just spin those holes open and get these letters on that actually wasn't too bad Okay, the letters are on. What's next? The brake wheel. Okay. I'm going to just clean up the corners of this wheel a little bit here. I've been doing this on a lot of the parts. I just haven't been boring you with it. I assume that there's a little bit of flash cleanup on everything. Not too much. This kit's pretty good for that, but there's always going to be a little bit, especially when you're if you're cutting wide or something. Is that going to go on? There we go. Way too large a drop of that onto there. And as the instructions say, let dry. Now, uh, while that's happening, what do we do? We goo the dome to the tank. So the way the draw, oh, there's a notch. And the notch that it meets with is there. That's just idiot proof. That just pops in just like that. Excellent. And I can put some glue on the inside of there so we'll never see it. That's great too. Okay. Drop that guy back into his spot. We glue it in place. Ta-da! Okay, there's the handrail. And it goes right around like that. And it plugs into a bunch of holes. Which I don't have to drill out. Oh, that's good. exactly what's the best way to accomplish this. Maybe I should do the two ends first. Okay, I've got all those handrails fiddled into place. I'm going to try something different for the glue again. 
Now that I'm almost done, but these things are tiny. I'm just using a paintbrush to get just teeny little bits of glue in there. This is a five slash zero uh, super fine paintbrush. I think I got at the one of my local dollar stores. There's a pretty good art supply section. Okay. Um, what else is left to glue on? Oh, the brake wheel, of course. The brake wheel goes right there. Should have drilled him out sooner. A lot sooner. Is that in place? I think so. I think that is the last step. Yes. That says completed model. I've run out of parts, except for the few extras that I didn't use, didn't need. Because that is the nice thing about these kits. They do have some extras if you happen to break one of those grab irons irrevocably like that one there. I'll just let this guy dry and uh, let's see how it looks up on the railroad. And there it is with the rest of my tanker fleet. I think it fits in pretty well with uh, with some of them. It is a little bit old for my era, as I've mentioned, but it's not uh, not going to bother me too much. All in all, I think that guy looks pretty darn good. Obviously, it's far too shiny for the era that I'm modeling. And it probably wouldn't have survived anyway, but that's beside the point. I'm going to run it anyway. It's going to need some weathering, but I think this video has gotten long enough, so I'll, uh, I'll do that weathering some other time. You may see it, you may not. I'm not sure yet. Actually, let me know in the, down in the comments. Do you, want to, do you want to see a weathering video on this car? Anyway, thank you very much for watching. As always... I really do appreciate it. If you've got any comments, jump down into the comment section and we'll do that down there. Thanks for watching and I will talk to you later.